Uh, I'm really happy to be here. It's my last speaking gig this year, so after that, I'm done holidays. Uh, I work at Castle, we're a security company. We help our customers protect their, their clients from um, account takeover attacks. Uh, so if you want to talk about it with me, make sure to find me. And today I'm going to be live debugging, so keep your fingers crossed for me. Um, so this talk is in two parts. First part is when we're going to try to debug a simple page for some performance, uh, with some per performance problems. Uh, so it's going to be about loading performance and then we're going to talk about interaction performance uh, based on some other examples. Uh, so this is our website. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to just refresh it. Um, you saw some blink, nothing fancy happened. I'm using Chrome and the page is um, actually built uh, with Jekyll. Uh, it's based on my ex-company blogs. Obviously I tweaked it a bit, uh, now it's about cats. Um, so you could see it loaded pretty fast, but I'm on localhost and I'm using a Mac, so how could it be not fast? So I'm going to open my DevTools now using Chrome. Uh, all right, again. Um, let me just move things around a bit for you. All right, so here are my, uh, my DevTools. And first, first thing I'm going to do is to make it a bit harder on the browser to load the page that I have. So I'm going to the performance tab that is here for everyone by default. And on the right hand side, we have capture settings. So I'm going just to toggle it. And I'm going to set the network to slow 3G and throttling to six times slowdown. And I'm going to refresh the page again. So to do that, I'm going to click Start Profiling and reload the page. So the page will get re-rendered in the background and actually I will let you see it. You'll see that it's a bit harder now. Like it, it takes way longer for the browser. And this is something that your client might be experiencing in their real life. Like people don't always have the perfect uh, conditions. Um, and after this profiling, we're presented with this very, very um, hard uh, statistics page um, that no one knows how to read. And I'm going to try to make it a bit easier for you. Is the size uh, okay? Do you see things good or it's too small? I mean, there's a lot of small things, but I'm just going to make it a bit bigger. So First thing you want to start understanding is that here is the timeline that shows like the whole um, recording of, of this performance audit, let's say. And here is also a timeline. And this timeline uh, down there is only the scrolled in part uh, of your timeline. Um, then when you hover over, you can see how the loading progressed. So you can see the screenshots. Um, you need to have this toggled in to have that. Um, and here we have some like weird bumps, colorful ones, which basically shows like the more here, it means that the browser did more work. Uh, if we see the red parts in here, uh, it means that something is going really badly in here. Uh, so these are the areas that you might want to look at. Uh, uh, and uh, probably you're going to see like some more activity in this part, uh, but we're going to take a look at, look at it a bit later. Um, then we have a lot of things in here. Um, I'm not sure why you can't see the network fully here. I think it's a bug, but it says network here. Well, I'm not using this network. Um, yeah, I think it's, or maybe it's just scrolled out. Uh, it says network here. I'm not using this tab for network here. I'm using networking here at the top of the DevTools. Um, then we have frames. Frames can be useful to just um, see how like loading of our page progresses. Uh, during the load time, it's not very useful. It's more useful when we're uh, trying to profile the interaction performance, so like some animations, some scrolling performance. Then you want to see uh, if the frames are uh, taking long. Uh, 
We have some interactions as well. Um, we don't need that for now. We have timings, which is very useful. Let me scroll out to, to show you that. So the timings will show us like the metrics that Harry mentioned at some point, uh, like how, how they progress for our page. So first is, um, um, we have our uh, DOM content loaded here, but it's from the previously believe. Then we have first paint, so it shows us like when first thing was painted to the page. So it's around here. You actually see the, the lines in here. Uh, we have first contentful paint as well. So it's, I think it's a bit off. It usually just aligns with the things here. Um, first contentful paint, which will tell us like when the first thing like text or, or image was, uh, was loaded. First meaningful paint, uh, usually text. Uh, and then we have the onload event right here when the full page was loaded. Um, if you toggle in main, it will show you a lot of activity that was happening here. So there, there are these uh, small red parts that you can see here. And if you hover over, it will tell you um, that something was off and actually give you some hints like what was happening in there. So uh, this main part basically tells us um, uh, the x-axis is the time, so the longer the task is here, the longer it took to complete it. And down to the bottom is all the things that had to be uh, done to complete this task um, for, for, for our website. Um, the rest of the metrics I'm not going to, to talk about. We don't have time for everything. And then you have some kind of sum summary. So it's for the scrolled in parts as well. So you can just take a look, look at some part that is mostly interesting for you and just check like what took the longest time. Uh, also you can just uh, see some, uh, some more uh, detailed uh, information about that. But Today we're doing a fortless version, like very, very easy one. Uh, I don't want you to, to get like too much into this uh, things in here. Um, uh, another part that um, I'm using for, for profiling performance uh, when using Chrome DevTools is the audits page. It has the Lighthouse uh, embedded. So you can run the Lighthouse audit and see how uh, what we stand on basically. So we're going to do an audit now. Uh, I'm going to be auditing only the desktop version of the website. I have only performance toggled in, in here to, to make it a bit briefer, briefer. And I'm using applied slow 4G with four CPU slowdown. So it's a bit better than what we are using when we were uh, refreshing our page just a moment ago. And I want to clear storage. So I'm just going to click run audit. Uh, it refreshes the page in the background. Um, and it might take uh, a moment to complete. Um, so basically we will, we will learn like what, what's uh, the statistics. Uh, oh, it's a bit, it's warming up, but a bit too long, I feel. All right, let's cancel that. I'm really hoping it won't uh, make me refresh uh, everything because I don't have internet connection here. All right, um, I'm just going to close the dev tools and let's start again. Maybe it will come true today. Last time I didn't really do well with my talk. <laughs> my demo failed. Um, all right, something is very much off with the audits. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see if I have the, any other all right, I have this here. It still works. Sorry about that, it should be working. It was working in the morning. That's what I always say. <sighs> All right, without this part, my talk will be really, really weird and boring, but <laughs> I'll basically tell you what should be showing up in here. Uh, if it doesn't come up in a second. Um, well, we're all humans, maybe it just got broken for some reason now. Uh, one last thing I'll try to do, I'll just try to refresh the page and then do it again. Um, try the Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't have Wi-Fi here. Yeah, and it's, it works offline, so that's the, that's the weird thing. 
Um, all right. No, I won't try the Wi-Fi. Okay, so if this audit went well, you can try it on your machine. It would tell us that we have around two seconds to start, like to any, uh, to see anything, and around four seconds until uh, the first meaningful paint is done. So first meaningful paint meaning that any text would show. So for such a simple site that only has cut pictures and text, it's pretty long time. So I don't really find it um, nice that it takes so long. So, um, yeah, it really got me off the hook that it doesn't work. It's the first time I see it. Um, so basically what we want to do, we want to get a bit down with the load time, even though Harry said it's a statistic that we shouldn't be looking at. So after having audit that is successful, uh, we can go to our network page Okay, which now doesn't show. <sighs> oh, it's here. Okay, I'm good, I'm good. No, I will not restart the browser because it will be horribly wrong because I have some things loaded when I had internet. Uh, okay, so what we do, we just refresh the page for our uh, network tab and we can see like all the resources that, that were loaded here. Um, and um, we can basically do a bit of a cleanup. That's what I want to start our uh, like debugging with, to do a, to do a bit of a cleanup. Um, fun thing that a lot of people don't know about is that if you do the right click in here, you can add or remove some things from the statistics. So it's very useful for me. I have one thing that is not here by default, which is priority. So this basically tells us like in what order the things were downloaded to show us the page. So um, we can see that we have obviously our document loaded. We have our style sheet, which is good. Uh, then we have our cat blog logo, which is also a good thing to have um, quite quickly. Then we have cat picture, we have some fading header. Uh, a lot of cat pictures again, um, icon hamburger and some fonts. So first, things, uh, first thing I want to do is like, I don't know what this fading header is. I don't, I'm not sure if it's really needed for the first load, if it needs to be so high up uh, on our list of downloaded resources. So to check out if it's really needed, what I can do is I can either go to the three dot menu in here, more tools and uh, rendering, uh, sorry, not rendering, request blocking. Um, all right, I will just, oh God. Request blocking. Um, so I want to enable that and then I can add some pattern uh, that, that will match what I want to um, basically block for, a min, uh, for, for the time being and see if it's really needed. So it was called fading header. So I'm just going to put fading and uh, asterisk. Um, and I'm going to reload the page. Um, all right, if I if I check it again, um, we should see, yeah. So the fading header wasn't really downloaded and the page loaded as before. So most probably we don't need it at the load time. So this means that we can offset a bit uh, the loading of this asset. Um, so I have my VS code open here with, uh, with the project. Uh, so I'm just going to look for the fading header um, default is our index page uh, in the in our Jekyll generator. So I can see that already the script for the fading header was pretty much down on the list of things. It's uh, like at the bottom of the body. So it means that probably someone wanted it to load a bit later, but it, well, it didn't really work for this person. So what we can do here, we can just add the keyword called defer uh, that will tell the browser to defer a bit loading of this re resource. It's very similar to async that a lot of people are familiar with, but what async does is like, it downloads in parallel the resource, but once it's downloaded, uh, it will uh, immediately get, get called, but with defer, the browser will wait for the uh, DOM content loaded. 
so it's better for us. So, okay, I'll, I'll save it and let's refresh our page again. And, okay, I'm still request blocking this. I need to unlock it. Come on, we will. Arrow, okay. And we will refresh the page and hold it. All right, so it's a bit lower, but I think I, yeah, I should, yeah, yeah, it's a bit lower in here. So you can see you can also uh, filter that by, by the things if you click things that usually you want to click it in a time when you want to click it. I click it by by chance here. Um, okay, so our fading header is a bit lower down. Uh, one more thing uh, that I don't want to see here uh, is this icon hamburger because it's probably for the mobile side, but I'm downloading it anyway. And uh, this is an unnecessary download. So I'm going again to, to, my, uh, to my VS Code and I'm just going to search for it. It's in the header. And I can see in the style sheet that it has background image, yeah, icon hamburger. And on a bigger screen, someone said display none. But it doesn't override the background image. So, um, well, the background image uh, is downloaded anyway. So what we want to do is we want to override the background image so that it wouldn't be uh, downloaded. All right. I'm just going to put none in here. This uh, this basically is a good way to, if, if we have some assets that are on the smaller screens but we don't want them on bigger screens, that's what we want to do. So let's refresh again and see if it's helped. Yeah, I don't see the icon hamburger. Okay, so we have a bit of a cleanup done now. So um, one thing that was there when we were uh, having our uh, performance uh, profiling done, that I didn't really like uh, is that, uh, okay. Yeah, you can see it here, even though, even though I didn't turn on the, the <coughs> throttling, that we see our image before we see any text uh, on our page. And I think that most people come to our page to read some things, unless you're a Tumblr. So I would want to um, actually change it a bit. I want the text to be visible as soon as possible. Um, so with that, what will help me uh, is uh, something called uh, font display swap. So I'm just going to look for the fonts I have here. Uh, okay. And I'm going to add display, uh, font display swap property to all, the, all of the fonts. As you can see, I am self-hosting fonts. Um, recently, a good thing about the Google fonts is that in May they added an option to just pass this uh, display swap as a parameter, which wasn't possible before. So you can also have it if you're uh, using Google fonts for hosting your fonts. All right, so I'm going to throttle a bit again. Um, and we're going to try to reload the page and start profiling. Probably we're going to see that, uh, yeah, you can see that the fonts are there uh, immediately after, after anything happens to our page. Um, so I believe that this was like the biggest performance bump that we had uh, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this talk basically that the text is visible uh, immediately. So what it does is uh, if you have uh, some fonts that are external, that are not native to your user's browser, well, the browser will wait with showing any text before they are loaded. And with this swap property, we're saying just put on any fallback font you have. So I have some fallback fonts settled uh, and just show it immediately. And only when the fonts are downloaded, uh, just swap this. Do you want to try if the audit will work once more? Yes. Yeah, I want to because it really uh, proves my point when I speak. <laughs> um, I know, I think we do it now. Uh, you can give me what? Internet. Do it. All right. Just turn on Wi Fi. Yeah. And click on the drop down. Head for the Wi Fi hot sauce. Yeah. And click on the unicorn gem. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. And um, yeah, the password is it's. It's. <laughs> Is this recorded? <laughs> yeah, but it should work offline actually. Yeah, yeah, it work. But I think it's something. It's maybe something didn't load before I, I I went offline. All right. I'll just refresh the page again once, just to be sure. Um. Okay. At least the phones are there. Okay, let's run an audit again. Maybe it didn't get warmed up before I came. Um, so basically, I believe that this is the, the biggest improvement because like users are able to read as soon as possible, like as soon as anything is loaded to your page. So this is the biggest performance improvement we're going to make today. I know it doesn't make it exciting to listen to me anymore then. Um, yeah, something is really off with the audit page. Um, it's not the internet connection. I don't know what happens. It 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 works usually. So this uh, what it made with the performance that should be there in the audit tab is like we had around 1.9 to loading anything, and uh, to um, uh, like any meaningful paint was around four seconds. But after changing this fonts, it would have the same like 1.9 for like first paint and first meaningful paint. That's what the audit page would say. Um, okay, um, so if we looked at our performance, uh, our performance tab, <laughs> okay, um, I will just refresh the page and open it again, all right. <sighs> Live coding, what can you do? Um, the next thing that is, um, Pretty, pretty bad uh, when we look at our page that gets reloaded. That's interesting. <laughs> All right, I'm never doing this talk again. <laughs> really. First time I did it, it went perfectly, and now it's just a downhill, right? Thank you, DevTools, for that experience on stage. Um, <laughs> basically, what you can see, or you will be able to see in a second, is that, yeah, we have our text, but then the images come in, and they're kind of shifting everything, so if someone started reading something, they, they would be, um, like, some shifts in the content. Some browsers, like Chrome, and I think Firefox as well, uh, already have it, uh, have something called scroll anchoring, so it doesn't happen, for example, on mobile, uh, in some browsers, uh, so that content isn't shifted, but some browsers don't have it. So we might actually want to do something about it. Like we might want to make sure that the content isn't shifted and just save some space for the images when they come in. Um, so it's pretty, um, pretty not complicated trick. I'm just going to go and our images are all the same size, which is, uh, I know you can't see it, but it says 700 by uh, 467. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use an intrinsic ratio trick. Uh, I'm going just to open my calculator. I'm going to open my calculator. <laughs> and I'm just going to put 467 by, by not one, shit. By one and then by 700. No, not my day today. All right, I did something wrong. I, what we were saying, 467. 467. By 700, yes, around 67%. Uh, as you can see, 66, 7, so 67, roughly. So this is what I want to use as my ratio. So basically, the proportion of the, um, of the height to the width uh, of our image. So it's called the snippet image. So I'm going to look for a snippet image in my, in my code now. Mm. Snippet CSS, okay. So... 
It's a very old code. I forgot to say it. That's why I'm debugging it because I, I was given it uh, after a long time. So I have container for the snippet image. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to position it re re relatively. I'm going to say display block because it was a link. So we need to display it as a block. Height will be set to zero. Uh, I'm going to put the padding bottom to this intrinsic ratio that we just uh, calculated. Um, and uh, then I'm going to, to actually go to the image itself and just position it um, absolutely uh, to the top and to the left. Okay. And it should be enough to save some space for our images uh, as, as the page loading is progressing, unless I made something wrong, yes. So we have our space, so we can see that there is not much of a content shifting anymore, which I believe is better now. Um, okay, one more thing that we noticed that in our network tab when we were looking at it is that we we're downloading a tremendous amount of cat pictures. So I previously uh, optimized all the cat pictures already. Um, so I think that this is the biggest improvement that you can do is to optimize your images usually, or just not don download that many images. But um, I think it, it could be a good idea to not force users to download all these pictures. Maybe they just want to go to the top of the page, click on the first link, uh, and see only one cat picture. So for that, um, we probably could use some lazy loading. So lazy loading is a technique that uh, will basically make only uh, a person download some images as they come like closer to them on the page uh, instead of downloading all the images immediately. Um, so uh, for that, uh, I, I just looked for a library uh, that would do that for me. And the one that I found useful was um, uh, lazy load. And it was really, really easy to set up. So what I did is I just um, I just downloaded the script. Um, I put it in. It's a it's a snip, it's like a partial here, and I used the easiest setup that was in the uh, that was in the in the documentation. So I put the selector of lazy, which is a class that I'm going to be added, adding to my images later, and the threshold of, threshold of 300, which says uh, to the browser like how far in pixels a user is going to be before we start uh, downloading the picture. Um, yeah, so let's just uh, add it. So um, we have... Uh, yeah, we're going to add it here in our, let's say, index page. Uh, I think it's the thing, yeah, include. I don't usually use uh, Jekyll, so. Okay, I'm going to include it here. And also uh, in, our, in our snippet, um, so I had to prepare a bit different, uh, well, uh, code for that, like a bit different HTML uh, than before. So basically what it does, I, I have a lazy class added to each of the images. And um, if post is supposed to be lazy loaded, uh, I'm using data as SRC instead of a just like SRC in the image. And if it's supposed to be loaded regularly, it's just using the SRC. Um, we don't want to double download. Uh, also, there is a flag called uh, loading eager. I'm going to talk about it in a second, but let's just see if it worked for us, how it worked for our cat pics. Uh, so I'm going to stay in our uh, network tab and just reload the page. Okay, so I just want you to see something in here. I can still see a lot of cut pictures. Oh God, what's happening? All right, um, 
I'm just going to reload the page again because something didn't really happen for me. I did include the script, right? Okay. <sighs> Thank you. That's very useful <laughs> to save the file once you change it. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I get pretty stressed because uh, of this audit tab not working. It was pretty much proving my point all the way. So now you're just looking at me struggling today. I hope it's not recorded. Um, anyway, <laughs> so we can see that we only downloaded two cats and as we scroll, we're downloading next cats. It's a bit slower because uh, I still have this um, throttling and slow 4G and 3G. So probably it would look a bit better uh, on a bit better connection, but I think it's like very good to save our users unnecessary downloads, especially the data can be very expensive in some countries. Um, if you want to learn more, I have a talk about it as well. Um, so yeah, so we have our cats, uh, cats uh, loading lazily, but uh, one more thing I wanted to talk about is, um, um, I mentioned that I have this flag, uh, that I had this, uh, God. All right. Uh, that I had this flag uh, called um, loading eager uh, next to my snippets. So basically Chrome released uh, an option to have like native lazy loading in the browser now. And to do it, we just need to put uh, a flag loading uh, eager or loading lazy uh, on our images. And this, um, this uh, library basically can can see if uh, if the lazy loading is uh, is there in the browser and it can use it instead of the instead of the library. So I can show you the difference. Um, um, I actually prefer to not use this um, to not use this um, native flag usually because uh, usually yeah it's it caused me some problems sometimes. Like some some pictures wouldn't show up uh, at all. Or, or I got more downloads than with the lazy loading library. So it's not perfect yet. Uh, and also it's only in Chrome. So I think that if you, if you want to have lazy loading incorpor incorporated, you want, to, you want to have it um, there anyway. Um, okay, uh, I'll just turn it off again. Uh, I don't want this here. <sighs> well, I'm not going to try the audit page anymore. Um, really, I think it's karma probably for something. Um, okay, um, I'll just make it a bit easier for you to see. So when we were refreshing our page, um, it's not visible here, but it should be. Let me just start profiling again. So it should be that we don't see anything for some time before our uh, our phones are loaded. Like we don't have any assets visible basically. Uh, and it's because, well, the browser will take some moment to download our style sheet. Will it happen here for me today or not? Uh, all right, I feel like I'm really struggling today to deliver a good talk for you. You're doing great. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for encouragement. Anyway, anyway, if we're refreshing the page, we should see it. Or we, we won't see it because Chrome is not liking me today. I have the slow 3G and I have slow down. I don't know why it's taking not too long. Anyway. It should be basically that we see nothing for a second before um, before we see anything. Maybe not, yeah, a second. It was exactly a second, yeah. So there is nothing for a second. So what we can do, we can use a critical rendering path, which will basically take a bit of a style sheet that is needed to, to display anything, any styles for the top part of our page. And, um, put it into our head tag, head tag that Harry is loving. So uh, it will basically uh, get us a bit more, uh, like it, it will be a bit faster to show any styles um, for our page. So what I'm using for that, 
well, it's like a one-off thing, but it's like you can go to your team and show them like, yeah, so we made it so much quicker with that, and then you can think of some long-term solution that will create this critical rendering uh, paths for you. So you need to put a link to your page here. I'm not going to do it now because it doesn't work with localhost. And then you need to put like the output CSS from your page in here, and we'll um, just spit out a, a nice, um, a nice CSS file that is minified for you. And what you want to do is to put it into a style tag and uh, embed it in the, uh, in the head tag of your uh, website. So I'm going to go to our default page again. Um, and I had it uh, in a critical CSS file. So I'm going to find my style sheet in here uh, and I'm going to just replace it in this place with the critical um, critical, critical CSS.html. Um, yeah, I'm going to move my style sheet a bit down, um, maybe above the lazy loading script. Um, and if we refreshed it now, um, we could probably see that we had some styles immediately, like we had header immediately on our page. And in our audit, we would see it even better. Uh, but we don't have our audit. Actually, the audit page, when it works, is really amazing because it shows you like some opportunities, like what you can do, what you can start with. Uh, like there's plenty of very useful links uh, where you can start optimizing whether like the biggest bottlenecks uh, for your website and um, well, anything that you can do and start uh, the optimizations with. Okay, so I'm going to leave this demo now. Uh, if you trust me and believe me, and if you want to, you can see my previous video of the SOC for a proof. After doing these optimizations, we went from four seconds uh, to the first meaningful paint to one second of a meaningful paint, which is like really amazing uh, improvement. Uh, train line would make a shitload of money of that, <laughs> I believe. Um, uh, so now we can move to interaction performance. Um, yeah, just look at my screen for a second. Um, so what can go wrong <laughs> what can go wrong? What can go wrong with interaction performance? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll just pretend I don't see how it's a weird size here. Uh, so, um, well, anytime we interact with the, with the page, with the website, uh, the browser needs to start serving frames. Um, and, well, if it fails to uh, serve the frames fast enough, um, then we are experiencing junk. And you can see junk here in this demo, like all the stuttering uh, spaceships that are failing to move smoothly, they're experiencing junk. So junk happens when the browser refresh rate doesn't hit the refresh rate uh, of our device. Most consumer market devices have refresh rate of 60 frames per second. I'm not talking about like gaming stuff or iPads Pro, which have like 120 frames per second. This means that the browser has around 16 milliseconds to uh, deliver a frame. A frame is basically like an image. Um, so it's really not much time. Uh, also, it's more like 10 seconds because there's some cleanup work after creating the frame anyway. Um, so the bottom line is the less work we give to our browser to do upon interacting, the more likely we are to uh, not experience the junk. So there are different types of changes that we can uh, enforce in our browser uh, that will have uh, dif like different uh, well, uh, chances of having junk or not. Uh, when I say interaction, it's basically when we're scrolling, hovering over element that will change, uh, clicking a button that will uh, change something on the website, like interaction, basically. Um, so three different types of change that we might be having uh, are here. First one is the layout change. So you can see that it's, it's just a box that is getting bigger and moving other things around. There is a paint change, which is uh, uh, the layout change basically needs to uh, 
happens when we change the geometry of the page and some things needs to get recalculated where, the, where, where they are, uh, what's their position, like how much space they're going to take. The paint changes when we change properties like uh, backgrounds or color, uh, background image. Uh, and it's a bit less heavy change than the layout, but still can be pretty heavy. And then there is a compositing change and it's happening when we change uh, properties such as transform or opacity. So I know that you can't really see um, like how this, uh, how this is influencing the, the browser. So let's hopefully pull up um, effectively the layers tab. Uh, I'm using very uh, useful shortcut, which is command shift P for that. Uh, oh, actually, first let's start with rendering. Um, so there is this rendering, uh, rendering tool in, in Chrome DevTools. So um, if you toggle, there is plenty of useful stuff, but I'm mostly using the, only the first one, which is paint flushing. It will show us like how browser needs to work around the things that we're enforcing on it. So with the layout change, you can see that after, after hovering over this element, like the whole page uh, needs to get uh, repainted. So uh, I'm not sure if you see it clearly. It's, um, Not what I wanted. Um, if you see it well, but it's uh, all these green areas that are getting changed. Uh, when we change the paint, it's only this part of the page, but it's still um, quite a lot happening. And in compositing change, it's the well, it's the most performant change because it's taking uh, advantage of the GPU of uh, of our device as well. Um, but there is also uh, something that you need to do to really make it work well. Uh, as you can see, when I hover off uh, with this compositing change, uh, there, there is something happening. Uh, so what is happening here? Um, when we are having a compositing change, the browser will try to do some like very last minute optimization in place. Um, so when browser uh, is starting to create a frame, uh, it's, uh, it's using something uh, called layers. So you can think of layers a bit like layers in Photoshop. So if you have two things on the same layer, they're kind of glued and you can really move them. But if you have something on uh, one layer and other thing on another layer, you can move things around freely. So this is what the browser is doing. By default, browser will put all the things on the same layer. Uh, and, but there are some special conditions that will make the browser put other things on another layer. So if the browser sees that something is going to be uh, transitioned, animated uh, with transforms or, or opacity, so with the compositing, uh, um, with the compositing uh, features, it basically will try to pull this element out on another layer and then uh, animate it or change it in some way. Um, but um, at the same time, when we hover off, it will uh, pull it again on the same layer that it was before. So this is what is happening here. Um, we can prevent it uh, fairly easily. So if we, if we check it out, um, we have our, uh, our div in here. So to put it on another layer, uh, we can do it explicitly, tell the browser, I think that this element is definitely going to be animated or transitioned or changed. So I think it makes sense to have it on another layer at all times. Um, uh, so what we, what we need to add is the will change uh, property and we need to tell what will change. So here we are changing uh, the transforms. And thanks to that, uh, we won't have this, uh, you can see that all other uh, boxes are still having this repaints and this one doesn't. Um, actually, there is uh, another tool in uh, DevTools that is really useful to see that, which is, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to open the new one, uh, which is called Layers Panel. Uh, and it it shows us all the layers uh, that are on the page. So you can see that now we have only this one layer in here. Uh, also, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very useful because when we click on every layer, it will show, uh, like show us like the reason of creation of the layer. So here we see that it was the wheel change property. Um, and also the layer is, uh, is here in, uh, in the square. Um, also we can, 
we can have all the panes, but uh, usually it crushes browser for me, so I'm not using it really much. Uh, although, um, yeah, it can be useful sometimes for debugging. So I can show you uh, uh, how, how, for example, you can say on your page like how these uh, tools are useful. So I have some parallax effect page in here. Um, I will just open the dev tools again for that. Uh, and I'll go to the layers. So you can see that we have a lot of layers in here. Um, so the thing with layers is that they're great, but also um, we shouldn't be using them too much. Like three to five layers per page is great. Uh, more than that can actually crash the browser for some less uh, fortunate users with some older phones because uh, each layer will take some of the mem memory of the device. So you don't want to uh, like over like like do it too much. So you can see that here we have a shit ton of layers on this parallax demo. Um, actually, let me. Not my days. Thank you. I know two minutes. You can actually have a 3D view in here, which I think is like pretty amazing. And it, it lets you like understand what's going on with all the layers. There are way too many to like, keep up with that. But if you have a few, few layers and you see one that you don't know where it's coming from, I think it could be a good idea to check it out uh, this way. Um, also, I have another page in here, which is, uh, which is using a parallax effect. Um, let me just show you. It's really pretty. We have all the fish in here. And you know, it's amazing, right? Um, so let me just show you how it looks uh, from the browser perspective when it comes to performance. So um, I'll go to the rendering um, tab again. And I'll enable the paint flashing again. All right, so let's go here. And you can see that as I'm scrolling, almost like half the page needs to get repainting all the time. So for me, it's not a problem, right? Because I'm, I'm using Mac, so I'm fine. But let's see what will happen if we throttle a CPU some more. Um, let's say it's like your mom's phone or something really old. So you can see that it doesn't really look good anymore, right? Like the fish is struggling to swim. Um, <laughs> So I think that basically what I wanted to say is uh, debugging performance uh, takes a lot of patience from you, patience for the browser vendors, um, also a lot of empathy when, you, when you're trying to actually use this uh, slow down uh, tools. And um, also Chrome Dev tools are not the only way to debug performance. Actually, I don't think even it's the best way to debug performance. Um, there are like, uh, there's also like web page test, which is a bit more, um, um, uh, I'm missing English word, but uh, web page test that will give you a bit uh, more, um, oh, oh God, I'm really missing the word. Well, uh, when, you, when you're using auditing in the Lighthouse, it's, uh, it's a bit determined by what device you're using, by your computer web page test uh, is using, uh, big range of devices that are really running the tests. So um, I hope that I convinced you a bit to, to dig in, into performance and see how easy it, it can be to like, get the big wins. Probably would be easier if the auditing would work, but you can't have everything. Um, and um, well, I wish you a good luck with your next endeavors when it comes to the performance lab. And thank you. Thank you.